We have a quite a heavy emphasis on sports here with Martin Devlin and uh, it's great because he gives a really, really cool view of the sporting world. But we don't do much in the arts space, would be fair to say, on the platform. So I thought we needed to change that. And um, we have the privilege in our family of having a, um, a, a woman who uh, found my son uh, about five, six years ago and now have two children and they live just up the road from us. And I've been surprised that she has been involved in international competitions, which she has won. One of them is often described as the Olympics of uh, photography and doesn't receive a hell of a lot of publicity. And it's, it, it just struck me as being really stupid. So I thought, hey, this, if we were uh, doing something in the sports arena, where Martin Devlin would be interviewing her right now and talking about her and talking to her about the issues that she's having, just like he does. So I'd like to introduce everyone on the platform to Amber Griffin. Good morning, Amber. Good morning, Tina. How are you? I'm very good. So this is a bit <laughs> strange when I'm talking to somebody who I know so so well. Uh, but you're, can you just tell us a little bit about your photography journey from when you started to be a photographer and and some of the things that have happened to you along the way to where you're at now, um, poised, waiting for the results of the World Cup of Photography? Oh gosh, that's a lot to pack into uh, a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> but I suppose that my photography journey started when I uh, decided to do a degree in majoring in photography at Massey University, um, which sort of came out of a design degree. Um, and then I worked uh, in graphic design for a while and then eventually didn't like the idea of sitting behind a computer screen on somebody else's time all day. So I decided to uh, move into having my own photography business. And that was about 10 or perhaps 11 years ago now. Um, and yeah, I have had some really good success with, al with uh, awards along the way on a national uh, scale as well as an international scale. And that was one of the most recent uh, things that was just announced a couple of days ago at the um, A Big American conference, I think, that they have over in uh, Phoenix. Uh, they announced all of the finalists for the World Photographic Cup. So the World Photographic Cup is uh, an awards, uh, photography awards that has been, I think it's in its 10th year now. Um, and it's not a, a financial prize or anything like that. It's, that's why I think they describe it as the Olympics of photography. It's um, countries enter as teams and the New Zealand team is derived from uh, our annual national IRIS Awards that the New Zealand Institute of Professional Photography uh, runs and we had a great team this year and two of us um, ended up getting two images each into the top 10 of uh, a couple of different categories. Excellent. And so who was the other photographer? Uh, Richard Wood. Oh yes, so he's the guy who does a lot he's of fantasy. very well known. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. Yep, up in the Hawke's Bay. He's uh, um, very successful and also very well known internationally for his work. And so, uh, how are you? Uh, 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 and you've won the Photography Cup in 2018? So, um, I actually, no, New Zealand has never ha never won the Cup, but I have, I did receive uh, the gold medal for the commercial category in 2015. 2015. And then the uh, silver medal in 2017. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, over the last few years, I've had a few top 10 uh, placements, but no more medals. Cool. And, uh, and so how is New Zealand standing in that international photography space? actually really quite high there's a lot of respect internationally for new zealand photographers um there i'm not sure if i've spoken to you before about sue bryce she's a very well-known portrait photographer who uh comes from south auckland and she has got a huge international education platform now run out of america um and she yeah she's just a a, a Kiwi girl who has just made it really big on the international stage. And I think that she's brought quite a few other Kiwis along the way 
uh, with her. So yeah, in, in general, New Zealand is very well regarded on the international photography stage. There's um, our sort of equivalent uh, Australian institution um, collapsed uh, the year before last. And so a lot of the Australians actually came over to our... Uh, New Zealand conference in Nelson last year and they were just stunned by the um, the level of New Zealand's work. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, and, yeah, and I, you know, I saw some of the images of that and I, I, I must admit I'm a bit of a junkie because I sit on, online and watch the judging, which I think is quite fascinating because you think, oh, wow, that looks cool. And then I go, it oh, no. really is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big way so to much. burn, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other thing is, how how easy is it out there? And, and you know, like for COVID, I mean, it must have been very hard still running a business during COVID. So what happened to you in COVID? Did it crush your... your, oh. your you know, you're feeling about yourself and your self-worth and, and your ability to be able to sort of carry on as a business person. How did you deal so, with that? Well, I don't think it crushed my uh, self-worth, but definitely crushed my income for quite a while. Yeah. Um, a, a large portion of income came from event work. I do specialise in dance photography, um, but that is sort of revolves around studio portrait photography as well as uh, dance events and theatres around the country. And the, um, yeah, I mean, gosh, how many years did we, was almost kind of two solid years of basically no events happening. Um, it was really challenging to try to um, make up that income. Mm. Yeah, I bet it was. Um, and, and just in terms of, of uh, stuff for competitions and stuff for commercial. So if you were, if you were doing stuff around, um, like a, for a commercial client, what's the differences mm -hmm. between what you would do for a commercial client and, and what are the things that they look for in a, comp in, in a, 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 a competition setting? Well, I think a lot of those um, things are quite... I think they're very similar. I think um, what uh, one of the reasons that I do choose to enter the national awards year on year is that the feedback that you get from other judges who are all in the industry and all kind of playing the same game, um, you just learn so much. And that those learnings are very much reflected in my commercial work that I do. Uh, and I guess all of the things that you learn at awards uh, just very much makes my commercial work kind of better and better year on year, mm. and um, I think they do. I think you don't you don't really get that kind of feedback from clients um, or the general public when your commercial work goes out there. So uh, it's the only way really to get that kind of feedback. And we have a saying in the NZIPP that a rising tide lifts all the boats. So um, the learnings that we all share um, really just I think. I think that that institution um, and everybody kind of belonging to it and helping each other within it is one of the things that makes mm. the New Zealand photography. It's a good saying, that a rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah, it does. It is, and it's really true. Like, it's difficult in this country and in, in our industry, there's a tendency to be um, quite competitive and withhold sort of information from people who you who you think are your competitors but mm. really there's, there is so, there's plenty of work out there for everybody and um it's, it's very beneficial to uh, belong to an institute like that and to um, contribute. You get the, the more that you um, put into it, I find the more you get out of it. And you talked about um, Sue sort of being someone who's, who's sort of inter like internationally renowned like yourself. Well, who were the other New Zealand heroes that you as workers uh, uh, really admire and who on the international stage do you take some inspiration from? Oh, well, Richard Wood would absolutely be a New Zealand uh, hero of mine. I just love his work and I, I have huge inspiration for uh, uh, just how innovative he manages to be. Um, year on year, his work is identifiable but constantly improving and constantly changing. Um, so to be in the same um, kind of competition and level as some of his work is really uh, quite humbling to me. Um, I think from a, because I'm very focused on dance photography, uh, there's a woman, Lois Greenfield, who um, works in, the, in New York, and I've followed her dance work for a long time, um, incredibly beautiful work. Uh, who else? Rachel Neville from, uh, I think she might be New York based as well. There's a lot of really good dance photographers in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, look, yeah. uh, that's been uh, it's been really, really interesting. Have you got so? What's the next awards after the World Cup um, that you've been um, looking at? Well, so they announced the Best of Nations, uh, which uh, so I was the Best of New Zealand, and then there's top ten for uh, there's quite a few different categories that they've introduced this year, mm-hmm. um, and I. Th- so we only know the top 10 and we don't know any of the orders of that. Uh, and then it's on the 17th of March that all gets announced in And Singapore. which categories are you top 10 in? Commercial and also illustrative portrait. And what's Richard in? He is illustrative portrait and... Oh, I think just illustrative right. or illustration. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating, which isn't it? Which is sort of... Um, there's a, yeah, there's quite a... Uh, a bit of a sort of clear-cut division in photography between um, things that are achieved in camera and then things that are achieved with more post-production work. That's so right, and, and so your work is enhanced. By that a lot. Yeah, your work is enhanced by the fact that you also have a fundamental understanding and expertise around graphic art and working yeah. on the computer oh, and post-production. Yes. I think that has been, and you know what? When you asked me right at the beginning where my photographic journey started, I would have to say that really at school in just in art class mm. is probably the fundamental start because a lot of those principles that I learned in painting and sculpture at school are so relevant to what I do now. Yeah. And I must admit, I'm, I'm seeing it in my grandkids. <laughs> I love the fact oh, that they can go yes. rabbit shooting with their father <laughs> at night and wake up in the morning and sit down at a or table. Or ferret shooting and, it was last night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good capture with a ferret. Yeah. So capturing a ferret one night and the next morning they'll be sitting at their wee tables creating their own artworks. Um, yeah. <laughs> that very cool. Eli, our, our youngest, our four-year-old, has actually, um, I think you've noticed, he yes. is incredibly good with composition. With yeah, He mm. snaffles my iPhone all the time and um, yeah. yeah, he takes a lot of photos that are quite well composed. Yes, he does. <laughs> he sure does. Hey, look, Amber, thank you very much for your time because I know you're actually in the middle of a meeting today. Uh, and, and taking the time out. But I just, as I said, I just thought we focus a lot on sports people in New Zealand. We don't focus a lot on the other arts and and the other parts of our society where people are doing some amazing stuff uh, on the world stage. And you're one of them. And we're proud to have you in the family um, oh, and enjoying life at the moment or doing life with you and the boys, the three boys, yeah. most important boys in my life, well, apart from my partner. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and uh, hopefully awesome. we'll get down for a barbecue tonight at the river or, or pretty soon. Sounds awesome. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for giving the arts a platform because um, it definitely uh, doesn't get as much attention in the media as sport and, and a lot of political issues. So uh, I really, really appreciate you your interest and the time. Thank you. Thanks. And you have a good, a good afternoon.